As long as that guy has a TV show, my goal is to just take him off the air. Shut the hell up. <laughs> Roland Martin from the House of Martin. <laughs> I've been watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> Try to, try to get my white friends back that supported Trump as a conversation starter. But anyway, from <laughs> Roland Martin, good morning. Glad you watched it. I've never seen the show. You never. <laughs> never. Yeah. No. That's okay. Me either. I started. I, I, I'm on. Uh, I'm on season three now. Yeah. Good. You can watch. You can watch for the both of us. Great. Okay. <laughs> the threes of us. Well, it was certainly well, happy 2017. Tom Sibyl, Damon, as well. Um, it uh, it was, I hate for us to start the way we're going to start, but the Chicago Sun-Times had this stunning magazine, stunning cover. Uh, they had the faces of the nearly 800 people mm-hmm. who were murdered in the Windy City in 2016. On Saturday, Tom, yeah, uh, more than 750 people walked down the, the Magnificent Mile carrying crosses bearing the name of nearly all those folks who were killed. Yesterday also, 60 Minutes did a uh, mm. profile on what in the world is happening in that city with the murder rate. Joining us right now is Mary Mitchell. She's a columnist with the Chicago Times. Mary, good morning. Good morning. Mary, he, 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 here's a, a very basic, fundamental question that I think is at the heart of all of this because uh, people keep asking me about it and, and it's just very simple. What in the world can be done in the city? What is the cause of this explosive murder rate in the Windy City? I would say that um, part of the problem, of course, is the lack of jobs and opportunity. The uh, poverty. Uh, Chicago is a very segregated city, and you have poverty that is concentrated in certain areas of the city. You put that together with the splintering of gangs. There's no organized gangs anymore. We understand that there's an underground economy, but that underground economy has been driven by drug dealing, and, of course, drug dealing is the business of the gangs. So now you don't have anything organized. You have people uh, going at each other over territory, and you have the proliferation of guns. Everybody has a gun. You got a gun. They got a gun. Everybody has a gun. You made a point that we talked about. All those together. You, you, made a point about the split, you made a point about the splintering of the gangs there, and I think that, that's an important thing. I talked to a pastor who organized a meeting with gang leaders. This was about two or three years ago. And the leader said, Pastor, we can't tell you who's out here doing the killing uh, because by the arrest of so many different uh, top gang leaders, uh, it used to be where they could know in a, in a matter of a moment who was out there doing what. You now have many lone wolves out there. Correct. Okay, well, well Mary um, and, and Roland, what's the difference in what you just described and other cities in the country that don't have this this murder rate? I mean, they say New York and L.A. combined, don't, they don't have the murder rate. And in this one year, the— And, and, well, they, and you have the same—and don't you have the same situation I, in, I in, in every major city I, like no, that? No, I, I, I won't say that—I uh, don't know what the situation is in New York and in— Baltimore and those areas where they where we, our murder rate is higher. What I would say about Chicago that's different is that Chicago has uh, a segregated is a segregated city. So what you this this is not happening all over Chicago. The entire city is not out of control. We're talking about certain communities in certain areas of Chicago. And when you talk about uh, the splintering of the gangs. You also have to throw in social media. Now people can get on the phone and communicate very, very quickly. You have people who have in Chicago who have filmed themselves getting shot yeah. in the street. And then you add to that a total breakdown when it comes to opportunity. There are no jobs here. There are no well, busy also, wage jobs. Let's also talk about the police department. And that that's, is, and that's that another is what you have going what you have going on is you have uh, one of the stories that, 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 that your paper has done, Chicago Tribune has been reporting on this, where police officers there uh, are, are, are admitting, oh, yeah, we have pulled back. In the 60 Minutes report yesterday, uh, Bill Whitaker interviewed uh, a union leader who talked about that. 
you have police officers who are getting paid who are not making stops, who are not arresting people, uh, and they have, and they are ticked off because of measures to hold them accountable. And also because, uh, 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 in all fairness, because the ACLU uh, came against the police department very heavily for stops. And I'm not saying that, you know, the police should not be held accountable, but when you put that together with people who don't trust police in the first place, they're not calling the police in some of these communities. They're handling it on their own. If they get into a conflict, uh, somebody pulls out a gun, they don't go and call the police. They go and get their gun. And, and what, so, is, and re- what and about Mayor, you have and, that. Mayor Emanuel and, and his role in all of this too, Mary Mitchell? Okay, well, Mayor, Mayor Emanuel, I think he is um, basically treading water here, trying to stay uh, uh, keep from drowning in all of this. Because the first thing, he's... He, He's pumped a lot of money and resources into mentoring programs and programs targeting young people in these communities, but that's a slow roll. That is something that's not going to pay off tomorrow. Uh, he's uh, uh, put a lot of pressure on Springfield to pass gun legislation that will hold uh, uh, repeat offenders accountable and keep them locked up. That has not gone well. Uh, he has uh, tried to put money into creating jobs on the south side and on the west side, but one grocery store is not going to get it. This needs a massive, a massive infusion of resources on all of these levels. And then you add to uh, uh, holding the police accountable. I mean, I'm at the point now when thinking anybody, uh, any police officer who admittedly says that he's not doing his job needs to be fired and he needs to be replaced. And let's talk about this here. The, 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 Tom, the Laquan McDonald case is mm-hmm. critical. When that police officer was arrested and charged with murder, that was sort of uh, the, the, the final straw for many of these officers. Uh, but, Mary, you said this thing goes back to two previous superintendents Correct. where the officers in Chicago do not like any accountability measures uh, to make them to be better officers to cut that cut out on this police brutality. Yes, because, you know, uh, when Jody Weiss was uh, the head of the police department, uh, they didn't like him because he was a he was an outsider, and b the focus was on police accountability. They had had several scandals, and uh, there was a crackdown on uh, on police and police activity. Then Phil Klein came in, and it was totally reversed. The concentration was on streets and gangs and arresting people on the street. And now we have uh, uh, Eddie Johnson, a real insider. Yeah, a real insider. We have Eddie Johnson, and I, I'm and and Eddie Johnson. God bless him. He knows the police officers. He knows what's going on. He knows that there are some people that are not going to do their, their jobs. But right now, it is very, very difficult for him to get a handle on the uh, uh, the uh, police piece of it. Well, let me just say, I, I live in Chicago, and I think it's hard to believe that if that was 750 or 800 white faces on that newspaper, that from every level of government, somebody wouldn't be doing something to save people in Chicago. So let's start with that. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. All right. I agree. Well, <sighs> hopefully 2017 will be different for 2016, Mary Mitchell. Sure Thanks to the great Mary Thank Mitchell. Thank you. Thank you. Take care now. Love you, Mary Mitchell. All right, Roland, good job. All right, folks.